on World News Tonight. Beware, the World Health Organization warns Europe of its coalition course with the infamous Omicron variant with some predictions stating 50% of the continent may be plagued with the strain within the coming weeks. The Johnson Party. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, under heavy public fire as new details emerge on the controversial gathering attempted by the government head, scathing backlash warning his possible attempts at regaining face amid pandemic failures. Tonight, the details on the scandal. Five billion for poverty. The world finally takes a charitable step to shelter the innocent as the United Nations grants a hefty sum to make harsher conditions more manageable for the displaced and the affected. A panda party. Pandas experience the joys of snow as they roll about in a world of frosted white flakes. This is Other There No World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with the rising COVID-19 infections again. The World Health Organization says more than half Europe's population will be infected with the Omicron variant of COVID-19 within the next several weeks. In China, a third city has been completely locked down after two cases of Omicron were confirmed in the urban area. The WHO is warning that half of everyone in Europe will be infected with the Omicron variant of COVID-19 within two months. The organization says the variant is quickly becoming the dominant virus in Western Europe. The Omicron variant represents a new west to east tidal wave sweeping across the region on top of the Delta surge that all countries were managing until late 2021. It says the agency's projection was based on the 7 million new cases reported across Europe during the first week of 2022. Many European countries are reporting record high daily COVID-19 tallies, with the new cases on Tuesday totaling over 360,000 in France. That beats the previous record of just over 330,000 recorded last Wednesday. France's health minister is asking the public to stay vigilant. However dizzying this situation could be, it requires a cool head and for us to take responsibility to continue the management of this unprecedented epidemic that has been going on for nearly two years. Italy is also grappling with a rapid surge, recording over 220,000 new cases on Tuesday. Its health ministry said the daily tally of COVID-19-related deaths rose to 294, the highest in around eight months. In the U.S., the average number of daily cases during the past week was over 750,000, roughly tripling from two weeks ago. The country logged nearly 1.48 million new infections on Monday, recording a fresh new high as the Omicron sweeps across the U.S. The surge has also pushed COVID-19 hospitalizations to record levels, putting a strain on the country's health care system. In China, Anyang has become the country's third city to lock down its residents because of an outbreak. Authorities announced a lockdown of the city, home to some 5.5 million people on Monday after identifying two cases of Omicron. Residents are not allowed to go out and stores have been ordered to shut except those that sell necessities. The U.S. top officials underwent a COVID-19 battle as they faced pretty harsh criticism over what senators call their confusing and often conflicting guidelines as the country deals with the most aggressive surge of COVID-19 infections yet. On the very day COVID cases tallied a staggering record high, 1.3 million new infections reported in 24 hours, key members of the White House COVID task force were blasted over their handling of the pandemic. And I'm not questioning the science, but I'm questioning your communication strategies. It's no wonder that the American people are confused. Testifying on Capitol Hill as new hospitalizations soar up 83 percent, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky faced withering criticism over perceived missteps and miscommunication. The American people don't trust the words coming out of your mouth. Every day you appear on TV, you do more damage than good. A frustrated Fauci so caught what, off camera I, I on a hot mic after a series of heated exchanges. What a moron. Jesus Christ. 
As the Biden administration pushes for more testing amid a serious lack of supplies and overwhelming demand. Tests are hard to find. They're costly. Frustrated lawmakers also called out the CDC's evolving guidance over shortened isolation times for those who contract COVID as pressure mounted from big business short on staff. You are scientists, not politicians. Uh, nevertheless, you are uh, being made subject to the uh, the political whims uh, of, of uh, various political individuals, and uh, and that comes at a high cost. Today's four-hour hearing, at times personal. What happens when he gets out and accuses me of things that are completely untrue is that all of a sudden that kindles the crazies out there, and I have life the threats upon my life. So for you to somehow suggest that somehow I or people who dare to oppose you are responsible for threats, that's insulting. The contention reflective of our national divide. And the purpose of the committee was to try and get things out, how we can help. As our nation braces for what could still be the worst of the spike in the days ahead, there was also this sobering warning as hospitals today struggle to manage the current surge. I think it's hard to process what's actually happening right now, which is most people are gonna get COVID. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson was under fire after it emerged his private secretary had invited over 100 people to a bring your own booze party in the Garden of Downing Street during the first coronavirus lockdown. The 23rd of March 2020 marked the start of the first UK lockdown as the world desperately wanted to halt the spread of the coronavirus. This while deaths in Britain topped over 300 a day. Now nearly two years later, more allegations have come to light that Boris Johnson and other members of the government breached their own rules. An email leaked by the British broadcaster ITV showed that less than two months after the Prime Minister outlawed gatherings, Martin Reynolds, Boris Johnson's principal private secretary, invited some 100 Downing Street colleagues to a, quote, bring your own booze drinks event. The Prime Minister and his wife allegedly attended the 20th of May gathering, these latest accusations have sparked outrage. I think many people that see the evidence now will not only think that Boris Johnson's lies are catching up with him, but will see it as absolutely despicable when they were actually told to follow the rules. The London Metropolitan Police said late Monday that they will be making inquiries over the alleged breaches of lockdown rules. The announcement comes as a separate probe by Sue Gray, a senior civil servant, remains ongoing. She was appointed by Boris Johnson to investigate a series of allegations that staff parties were held at number 10 during the spring of 2020 and in December later that year. Accusations that the Prime Minister says he will not comment on while the probe is still ongoing. France has been hit with a new grim milestone as the rate of infection within the country has seen a record high. The Omicron variant continues to dominate these rates and citizens will have to face restrictions yet again in the form of jab passports. For more on this, we have Abhijit in the World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna who joins us now from Normandy in France. Chetana. Yes, Shanali. France saw its COVID-19 infections rate hit a new record as the newly highly contagious Omicron variant sweeps across the European continent. France reports new COVID infection record with the daily cases surging to over 360,000. Its seven-day moving average of cases was nearly 270,000, significantly above the tails in neighboring nations like the UK. France is about to implement a strict COVID passport system where the citizens will need to be vaccinated before they can enter restaurants or indoor events, rather than being either vaccinated or registering a negative test. President Emmanuel Macron sparked controversy last week after saying he would make life difficult for those citizens who refuse a COVID-19 vaccine. And now France is planning to tighten most restrictions. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adi Deren, a World News Pressure Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. Pakistan said that authorities have partially inoculated 100 million people against the COVID-19 as the fifth wave of the coronavirus has begun in the country. And in order to expand their vaccination drive, the city of Karachi are inoculating women by visiting their homes. 
Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, launched a door-to-door -door campaign to vaccinate women on Tuesday. Women are lagging behind men in rates of coronavirus inoculation, officials said. It came as the country entered a new wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, with more than 1,400 cases reported on Tuesday. The provincial government's campaign will use female health workers. They've long played an instrumental role in countrywide polio vaccination campaigns in the South Asian nation. This housewife said she felt it was a positive step taken by the government, as women often don't have enough time to go for vaccination because they're working at home. About 70 million people in Pakistan, or 32% of the population, have had two vaccine doses. The first case of the Omicron variant was reported on December 13th in Karachi. The federal government has acknowledged that a fifth wave of the pandemic has started, with Karachi, Lahore and Islamabad seeing most of the cases. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. The World Bank expects the fast-spreading Omicron variant will have a lingering impact on the global economy throughout this year. It revised down its growth forecast for 2022 to 4.1%, down 0.2 percentage from its earlier estimate in June. The World Bank has painted a grim picture of the global economy this year and beyond amid the ongoing pandemic. In its latest forecast, the Washington, D.C.-based financial institution projected global economic growth to slow from 5.5% in 2021 to 4.1% this year and 3.2% in 2023. It warned that Omicron could even further erode global growth to 3.4% this year. While a specific forecast for South Korea was not given, the growth for East Asia and the Pacific was also projected to decelerate to 5.1 percent from last year's 7.1 percent. The bank said the rapid spread of the Omicron variant could mean the pandemic will stay longer and continue to disrupt economic activity around the world. Giving a dim outlook, the World Bank's president, David Malp, has stressed that putting more countries on a favorable growth path requires concerted international action and a comprehensive set of national policy responses. Meanwhile, the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, seems to believe that inflation is more of a serious concern for the U.S. economy for now. If inflation does become too persistent, if these high levels of inflation get entrenched in our economy and in people's thinking, then then inevitably that will lead to much tighter monetary policy from us and it could, could lead to a recession. Powell said he expects only a, quote, short-lived impact on employment and growth from the Omicron variant and that the outlook for the ensuing quarters could be very positive as infections subside. The United States and its European allies coordinated their position ahead of new NATO Russia talks to defuse the Ukrainian border crisis as Kyiv demanded an international summit. A week of crucial talks continues for Moscow, with negotiators heading this time to Brussels. Russia is trying to get a pledge from the U.S. that NATO will not expand to Ukraine. But its demands have so far been brushed aside. We see no real reason to be optimistic so far. Deputy Foreign Minister Ryabkov said the first round of talks was positive because it was open, substantive and direct. But our goal in these negotiations is not having talks. It's the result that matters and nothing can be said about the result yet. Indeed, for Washington and its allies, the Russian demand to keep NATO and its missiles out of Ukraine is a non-starter. For Washington, Russia's deployment of 100,000 troops on its border with Ukraine to keep pressure up is unacceptable. As these talks continue, they will not be successful unless we can do this in an atmosphere of de-escalation. Ukraine should not have this sort of Damocles hanging over it. Ukrainian authorities, who are not taking part in this week's negotiations, say they feel they have U.S. backing. They're asking for an international summit with France and Germany to resolve the crisis. Although talks are ongoing, many Ukrainians fear a Russian invasion. 
like these residents were training to fight, not just in the eastern part of the country, but also in Kyiv. President Joe Biden took a major political gamble in calling for a break in the Senate's supermajority rule so that Democrats can override Republican opposition to voting rights reforms that he called crucial to saving U.S. democracy. Trying to make good on a campaign promise, U.S. President Joe Biden was in Georgia this Tuesday making an impassioned plea for new legislation on voting rights. Today, I'm making it clear to protect our democracy, I support changing the Senate rules, whichever way they need to be changed to prevent a minority of senators from blocking action on voting rights. Hear me plainly. The battle for the soul of America is not over. Democratic lawmakers have warned the passage of two bills is critical to protect elections. Several Republican-led states have adopted a wave of new restrictions on ballot access, especially for minorities, giving their party an advantage in future elections. One of the bills would make it easier to register new voters, would establish Election Day as a federal holiday, giving people time off to vote, and would create universal access to mail-in voting. But unlike in the House of Representatives, the Senate requires a 60-vote majority to end debate on a bill and to move on to voting. The ability to block that vote from happening is called the filibuster rule. As a senator, Joe Biden defended filibustering for years. Now, after some resistance, he's calling for a change to those rules when it comes to voting rights. But both parties have used and ardently defended the technique in the past, something Republicans have put emphasis on in recent days. Legal experts argue that lifting the filibuster for voting rights could create a dangerous precedent, opening the floodgates to lifting it on a range of other issues and ending the possibility of bipartisanship in the Senate. We have some good news for you. The UN and partners launched a more than $5 billion funding appeal for Afghanistan in the hope of shoring up collapsing basic services there, which have left 22 million in need of assistance inside the country and 5.7 million people requiring help beyond its borders. It's the largest ever humanitarian appeal for a single country. The United Nations called for around $5 billion in aid for Afghanistan in 2022 aiming to deliver relief to over 22 million people, making up more than half the population, and support nearly 6 million displaced Afghans in five neighbouring countries. This is a stopgap, an absolutely essential stopgap uh, measure that we are putting in front of the international community today. Without this being funded, there won't be a future. We need this to be done, otherwise they will, there will be outflow, there will be suffering. The global body clarified that $4.4 billion in funding was needed within Afghanistan to support the health services, food, shelter and sanitation infrastructures, whilst a further $623 million is needed to assist organisations working with the regionally displaced. The UN assured the plan has been calibrated to ensure that the aid goes directly to the needy and not to the authorities. The key here is to stabilise the situation inside Afghanistan and uh, um, including that of displaced people who are displaced inside their country. Since last year's seizure of power by the Taliban, the country has plunged into financial disaster due to the withdrawal of foreign aid, leaving the economy on the brink of collapse. Okay. Coupled with the coronavirus pandemic and its worst drought in decades, food prices have rapidly surged. And the World Food Programme estimates 98% of Afghans don't have enough access to food. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Novak Djokovic said human error was behind a mistake of his documents for entry to Australia that breached his strict laws on reporting recent travel as the government weighed whether to deport the player. North Korea has confirmed the projectile it fired was a hypersonic missile which aligns with the assessment of South Korean military. This missile was faster than the ones tested previously and its launch was attended by Kim Jong-un himself. 
Magava, the landmine detected hero rat, has died age 8. During his working life, Magava's job title was Hero Rat and he was awarded a gold medal by the UK-based veterinary charity PDSA in 2020 before retiring in June 2021. Resident of Canada's Quebec who refuses the COVID-19 vaccine may soon have to pay a health contribution. Instead, Quebec's plan is already being called constitutionally vulnerable by critics, but experts say the province is well within its rights and the challenges are likely to fail. Argentina is facing a historic heat wave with temperatures soaring above 40 degrees Celsius, making the country for a while the hottest place on the planet, straining power grids and forcing residents to seek sanctuary in the shade. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow on more news around the globe. In case you missed any of the stories that we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We are leaving you tonight with visuals of a fuzzy friend frolicking away in fresh snow. Thank you for joining us again. Good night.